Now to the boys. Solomon Salama will take on Nick Archaki. Nick from outside Erie, Pennsylvania. Solomon from Beverly Hills. SoCal. LA area. Two-handed lefty. Underway, boys championship match. Great start for Solomon. Sayertown, Pennsylvania. That's the hometown for Nick Archaki. South of Erie, roughly two hours north of Pittsburgh. The 15 year old starts his day. Ball 10 down. Both young men getting out of the gate very, very strong. Lefty, righty, so neither one are going to see transition that quickly because they're playing in a par lane all by themselves. Interesting to see how the match progresses over time. Two game total pinfall, same as the girls. Another tall young gentleman, a lot of leg power. Gets the ball down the lane very easily. Wow. He blitzes through all 10. Impressive rev right there for Nick Archaki. Future for the sport. Lane pattern. What are our bowlers competing on here today, Kelly? Yeah, so these young gentlemen are bowling 43 feet medium volume. And look at the graphics here, how it's very long in the middle, but then tapers out. They're going to play in different parts of the lane. Both boys can play 5 or 10 zone, kind of shim it up the lane. What I mean is there's going to be hold inside of their target where they're playing. One is going to be playing straight down on the right side and very far outside on the left side with urethane bowling ball. Solomon tries to find that one-two pocket comes in high from the left side. Two, four, seven up. Four-step approach. Catches himself at the foul line, though. A little faulty footwork there. Eighth grader. Now Solomon, well, what else do you like beyond bowling? He said... Nothing, man. I just want bowl. He is into it. He didn't like it, but he does cover. We well, looked down in disgust as soon as he released that ball. Thought he maybe even missed the two, but he does convert. Look at his footwork here. He's got a four-step approach. So left-handed, starts with that left foot. Two-handed, so the ball really doesn't push forward. He gets in the swing. High backswing, long extended slide. And as the right-handed Jason Belmonte, how his hand comes with the ball, same way for him. Left-handed Solomon up the back in control. A little finesse at the bottom with his release. Another one, Jason Belmonte is his favorite bowler. Busy eight pin there. Belmo has made several appearances and is here today. Now, Solomon told us pre-match he's not met Jason yet. One of the best bowlers in the world. But he's only a few feet away, so he's bowling in front of his hero. Yeah. That's pretty cool. What an that opportunity. Excellent. I asked him, so he said Beverly Hills, California, but he said L.A. area. I said, do you see a lot of celebrities? He said, no. I said, well, they're going to realize that you're a celebrity when you go home? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's the eight pin. Well, he's next to a big celebrity at Jason Belmont, that's for sure. The SBC Bowling Academy road to the finals. See how these young stars got this far. Nick Archaki, 434 over Jorge Rodriguez at 395. Solomon defeated Anthony, 423 to 397. And as you see, these 1,500 boys are in the championship match facing off the winner. will earn a spot on the developmental team for Team USA, as well as some well-earned scholarship money. Back to Nick, powering through the winning champion. Well, he has got velocity. Yeah, Richard Paul III already qualified again. It's the qualifying score after the 26 games that determine those two individuals. But these two young gentlemen bowling for the title right now, whoever wins will win scholarship money. Again, be on the developmental team of Team USA 2017. And more college recruiters looking at them.
Nick takes care of the 10 pin. I really like both players' games. They're physical fundamentals. Nowadays, when we're talking about USBC bowling and the teaching techniques, it's getting the ball in the swing a little bit faster. Again, the feet have a tendency to want to follow the swing. So if it gets in the swing faster, the feet should be fast. Able to get yourself to slide and get that foot steady to create a lot of leverage in a flat spot, the release. And as you see, both boys, two-handed, one-handed, have a lot of rotation at the bottom of their swing. He looked down for a second. But boy, he was flushing the pocket, all 10 down. Didn't like his feet at the approach of the foul line. Pretty good result, though. Chucky is struck in three of the first four frames. This is two-game total pinfall match. As we saw the girls falling behind for Sarah. Problematic against Mabel. Mabel Cummins won the girls' junior gold championship. Lisa Primavera is here, Solomon's mom. Just a young age of 13 years old. In 2015 in the U-12 boys division, finished 37th. Both young men plan to keep coming back each year to compete in this event. I asked if they bowled in the team trials in Las Vegas in January that Team USA offers. Neither one has. Too much traveling, they said. Solomon finds a range in a one-two pocket, all 10 down. <laughs> Little comment by himself. Oh, we're hearing foul, possibly. Uh-oh. Not too sure. He's just hearing it for the first time. Whoops. Well, that hurts. Yeah, I just realized it. So let's take a look here, Kelly. Yeah, those of you tuning in at home, if the foot goes past that black line, it's considered a foul. Oh. Yes, he was behind, and when the foot made its initial move to gain his balance, he stepped over the line. That's a shame, so no pins there. Yeah, see, so he looked down, uh, he's walking that tightrope, tight rope, but he was, in fact, across before he looked down. We do have a line judge sitting at the foul line yeah. watching and observing. Good news is he's on a strike, so if he can spare this here by staying behind the line, he won't lose any pins. The double would have definitely helped him along the way in the match, but he can spare here and save it. Just like that. Got to give Solomon a lot of credit, Kelly. We're underway from Indianapolis. Junior gold, U15 single championship. Moving ahead in our match. Game one, total pin pinfall for two games to determine a champion. Solomon had an open in the sixth with just an eight pin count. Nick steps up and leaves a three pin. The seventh frame for Solomon, six pin, and he did convert the single pin conversion. Yeah, he's got a four-step approach, and he generates a lot of speed in those four steps. But this is Nick right here. A little faulty footwork. Even before he started the approach, though, he was working on his thumb hole. And uh, he's got some tape on his thumb for sure. Uh, again, 26 games of qualifying, going to the bracket and the match play form. A lot of swelling going on in the joints and the digits themselves. So he definitely did not clear that one cleanly off his hand at the release. But makes it fair. thumb there, yeah, you're right. And they told us pre-match that they were scheduled to report to the bowl yesterday at 7 a.m. And they didn't leave till 11 o'clock after a couple of wins over Jorge Rodriguez. That's a long day for young bowlers. Very long day. Probably average around 192-ish right around there in his matches. But yeah, 7 a.m. all the way to 11.30. Not a normal work day for the average person. It's all 10 down, Nick Archaki. One of the best shots we've seen from him. He's still looking at that approach. Now how will Solomon do, especially in that left lane? Yeah, Solomon fouled in the left lane, so he finds a little slippery. Nick might find a little bit of tacky. Again, but you look at the height difference and the age difference. Nick's got a full foot, maybe foot and a half over Solomon. 
So a lot of momentum going forward. But in this division alone, in the under 15 boys category, we had 519 to start off the event. Again, one in seven ratio for cashing. So 75 boys in that age group walked away with scholarship money this week. All 10 now for Solomon. And you can tell every time he's approaching the foul line, whether it's left or right lane, he's looking down. Yeah, and what he can do here, he's definitely got a lot of slide going in those shoes he's wearing. He's still able to get the ball in his hand in his attendant target path. Comes up high, trips to 6'10". Solomon, all 10 down, back to back, Jax. Trying to gain some confidence. Double in the eighth and ninth. Now the foundation frame for Nick. This is a two game total pinfall match. So things are very close. Not just in game one, but overall the big picture. As his qualities about his game is he really knows his equipment very, very well. He's very good at lane play and his accuracy is really what he focuses on to get through the matches. Other than maybe one slip off, he's, he's been on his target path every single time. Again, that thumb getting swollen as the match progresses. No problem right there, though. Little loft. Hangs onto the ball a split second longer. Had a little bit more loft there. Might have been his game plan all along. 40 to 43 feet there. That brown tracer, board number 10. He's right over it every single time. Each player will have their own steady routine. How much time they take, if you time them, every time in the routine they'd probably be within a second or second and a half every single time. But tenth frame foundation. Nick can strike out for 227. Not with that 10 pin leave though. Solomon a max score of 213, so close one in game number one. He missed the 10 pin earlier. Kind of might just be from hanging up with the ball a little bit too long. Takes his time. Shot clock's up there for display, but it's not in being enforced. Cross lane of the spare. There's a 10. Nick takes care of business. Strike here would give him a score of 206. Leaves Solomon if he strikes out 213, just a difference of seven pins. Looks like he's going to make a ball change here on the fill ball for some information going into game number two. Great ball reaction there. Parents Tom and Ann are here. Great to talk with them pre-match today. Ann said that when Nick was 18 months old, he started getting bowling balls out of the closet and rolling them around in the kitchen. <laughs> 18 months. Early start. Did he not have the plastic set like I, everyone else? I, I, no, apparently not. It's pretty uh. heavy, too. You can get out of them. Depend on what kind of ball you have, 15, 16 pounds. I don't know. Back to Solomon. Great shot. So even after that foul earlier, he's been able to rebound. Throw a three-bagger here. 153 again, four-step approach. Ball comes way back high with that elbow. So much of a finesse shot off his hand. Watch the ball power through. Clearing off the pin deck. Again, using his shirt as an, as an oil rag. Take off the oil off the ball. That's his routine. Love it. Yep. He also has his fingers wrapped and taped. Yeah, notice that. You gotta wash that shirt a lot, though. Back score 213 for Solomon. Gets some help on the six pin. Catches a break. He did not care for that one off his hand. Thought it was a little bit inside target. I thought so, too. But let's look what happens here. 
Catches a break. Urethane is not going to move too much on the lane. Hits high on the head pin. Three pin goes off the sideboard. Kicks out both the 6'10". And again, at the age of, of 13 years old, even throwing urethane, he's able to create so much power because of how much speed he creates with his legs and his footwork to the approach. Pepsi State Championship winner, 2015 U12 boys. These youngsters, very impressive. Good thing that's the fill ball, Dave. That's yeah. an unusual leave. 210, 206, a four pin difference. It's all about two game total pin fall for the U15 Junior Gold Championship from Indy. One of participants in the Storm Pro Am. 3,200 youth bowlers at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. We talked about the 48 college coaches there. Great scholarship opportunities, among many things. Opening ceremonies at Victory Field. Boy, it's been a great week for these young bowlers. Nick Archucky looking for help. Six pin won't get it this time. He shot a 300 when he was 12 years old. High on the head pin. Didn't catch, quite catch the break as before. That loner pin comes up behind trying to salvage that six pin standing by itself. Just not enough. He made the ball change in the 10th frame. Not quite sure. OK, so he's using his towel to clear the thumb hole. I thought it might have been a piece of steel skate. Right. Usually they do that to make it softer so the thumb can in and out much quicker. But it's definitely troublesome for him. Interested in two college bowling powerhouses. There's the six. There's his mark to begin the second game. So here's Solomon, who's homeschooled. And he told us pre-match he's very into science. Would like to be a biomolecular chemist one day. Say that three times. Yes. That's basically chemistry on a very small scale. And that's what he's into. That's impressive to me at 13 years old. Yeah, to know at such a young age, to know what you want to do. Here's his footwork, four-step approach, gets a little airborne. Hand at the bottom of the swing, tilts inward with the heel. Ball path again, urethane. Not much directional change in the ball. Wow. For such a young man, small in stature, he's able to create, again, a lot of velocity at the pins. Shreds the rack there. And a great start for Solomon in the second game. 14 pin lead now. Nick works on a spare. Let's watch that foul line. Whoa, it's that, oh, that secondary slide, Kelly, gets him really close to yeah. foul. Yeah, again, he's got so much power and force behind him when he lets go of it. His body still continues to move forward. Usually the knee bend would extend forward even more. He gets a little bit tall at the foul line sometimes. If he could stay down a little bit lower, he might avoid some of that. That's good advice, coach. There's Nick. There's a strike. Both young men so serious. Let's look at Nick's style. Starts with the left foot, gets the ball in the swing again very, very fast. Not so much high of a back swing. Because the ball's in the swing fast, his steps are small. Gets to the foul line. Plants right there, arm swing, long in length. Six pin trips out the 10. He's got an extra foot and a half advantage over, over Solomon, so he takes advantage of that. Think of Miko Koivinemi, lofting the ball as far down as he goes, or Wes Malott, tall in stature and what he can do with the bowling ball. The big Texan. And a great PBA star. Fantastic. Nick had six strikes, Kelly, excuse me, in that first game, and now back-to-back -back jacks. There's the double in game two to keep things very interesting. Yes, indeed. Solomon tries to stay perfect game two. Not this time. 
really sliding at the end of that approach. Two, four, seven up. What would you tell him to do about the footwork here? Yeah, really having some troublesome times with it right now. Again, I would probably take a half a step back just to, to avoid the foul line, not even think about it, put in consideration. Maybe a lot of the bowlers have the brush, so they're going to wipe their sole every single time before they step out on the approach, knowing that they have the same consistency from shot to shot. Maybe something he'd put in his repertoire there. And wipe off the shoe before you start. That's got to push. It does, boy. Late tap on the seven. <laughs> He's not happy at all about it. Yeah, he's shaking his head. So, you know, Solomon, when you get to be a professional bowler, whoever they go down, they go down. Yeah, you'll take it, right? <laughs> Just inside of the two pin, four pin falls back, but the two pin has enough energy to bounce off the side and just tip the seven pin over. Don't shake your head, they all go down. But Solomon's path to the finals, defeated Terrence Rock, 466 to 400, so 233 average. Made his way through. Anthony Newer twice. Averaging 245 or better. And then the final match to get here to see Nick. Shots like that. We got him this far. Want to compete with friends on national TV? The 2017 USA Bowling National Championships will be held in Cleveland, Ohio. Regional events are held in 16 centers across the country beginning this fall. Contact your local center for details about leagues and to find a regional tournament near you. Visit bowl.com backslash USA Bowling for more information. 210-206. Nick can take the lead. He didn't like that approach much either. Look down at it and leaves the 6-10 up. Over time, both players seem to having footwork difficulty. Now, with the technology of today, I mean, the shoes themselves, they have changeable soles, changeable heels to adapt to the climate changes that we're facing. We're in a heat spell right now in Indianapolis. So the approaches can be tacky from time to time. And the lights don't help it, I will say that. His favorite pro bowler, Wes Mollott. Well, let's compare Nick's approach with the big Texans. Now, Wes starts the ball on the inside of his body. He also takes only a four-step step approach. Alex takes five. Height of the backswing looks pretty close. Wow. What similarity there is. West stays down a little bit longer, and a known fact, West looks at the foul line when he goes to release the ball, whereas Alex looks a little bit further down the lane near the dots of the arrows. But yeah, the similarity in the approach alone, you often want to mim mimic the best player that you watch, and that's a great comparison right there. A little bit light in the pocket, pushes the pins all the way to the left. Excellent delivery. Way to bounce back. Three pin match. Midway point, Solomon steps up. Works on a strike, looks for the double. Has to go up by 13. If he strikes here, well, 2 4 up, 8 pin count, keeping things very interesting. Yeah. Neither bowler was able to separate here, Kelly. I know. I'm just watching their physical skills, and, and Solomon, you know, Jason Belmonte is his idol, right? So if you look at Jason's game, if we saw it over time, Jason's a little bit more crouched in the starting position, and the ball starts in front of his right shoulder. Solomon being left-handed, I'd love to see the ball just a little bit more outside the center of his body, just directly in front of his left shoulder. A little bit more body bend or, or back angle bend at the waist. Might help clear the swing a little bit better, but he's been consistent last game and a half. Try to stay that way, does cover nicely. Good mark. Junior gold from Indy. Boys U15 finals. It's very close. We determine a champion next. Moving ahead in our championship match, junior gold, U15 boys. Here at Indianapolis, Nick Archaki, sixth frame, crossed over. 
and just left the five pin converted that in the seventh left the 10 pin converted that single pin spare as well solomon in the eighth frame all 10 down after he converted the seven pin single pin spare as well in his seventh frame so he strikes and nick down by four pins eighth frame works on a spare Strikes in the left lane, six out of 10, three out of eight on the right lane. So, and he has to finish on that right lane, whereas Solomon's gonna finish on the left. Still having issues with his thumb. I saw him clip some skin off his thumb. Ouch. Tied through eight frames. Solomon still has the four pin advantage. This is great bowling at its finest. 210, 206 after game number one. Again, total pinfall for the two games. 237, max score for both bowlers in this game. It's gonna come down to the 10th frame, folks, who will walk away with the National Junior Gold Under 15 Championship. Push. High flush. Wow, big strike. Yeah, Nick did say he's very good in pressure situations. Right there, right then. Overboard 10's got the loft going in front. Very direct on its path. Crushes the pocket. Ball rolls off towards the eight pin. Looks a little perplexed at that strike, but I'd be happy with that. Gotta be with the result. Yeah. Now up by six pins. That fan's pretty close to <laughs> trying to cool <laughs> off everything, right? This is a clutch shot for him. Looking for a little help. Six pin does stand though for Solomon. In our foundation frame. Yeah, the advantage went back to Nick. But Solomon sliding about, ooh, 10, 11, 12, outside, extreme outside, four board. Just comes up light. With the adrenaline going on, a little more acceleration with this ball speed. That's why the ball didn't pick up. Light six pin leave. But it's a single pin. It's an easy spare conversion. Six pins got it. One of this match makes the developmental team. We talked about that for our broadcast. Yeah, Solomon can strike out here for a score of 217. And Nick could strike out for 237. So 20 pin deficit right there. Even though Solomon has a six pin deficit right here, he had the advantage going into game number two. Again, total pinfall will win. He's looking over at the scoreboard to see what he needs. He needs to strike out to force Nick to show up in the 10th frame. Won the first game 210, 206. Has the first. Great shot right there. Looking back, now you can't reminisce. Don't forget he had the foul working on the strike, but he made the spare. Hope it doesn't come back to haunt him in the end. Both players, excellent execution. Even though they're maybe a little bit faulty at the foul line, ball seems to be on its path to the pocket each and every single time. Makeable spares. Again, 217 max for Solomon. Looking for a second attempt. No. Wow. Ooh, nasty leave. High, Two, high, six, high seven, up on the ten. head pin. Ooh. Yeah. High, high, high on the head pin. Just gets his hand around the ball a little bit more. Ball picks up two to three feet sooner. And yeah, either way, be a little bit smart here. You, you can try to go for it. Slide the ball just to the outside of pin number two. Take out the seven pin. Hope the two pin slides over to hit the 610. Got 
chance. Really tough. Oh. Converts it. What a spare for Solomon. A fantastic shot. The finish at 2.07. Wow. It's like he's done that many, many times before. He executed just as I said. Left side of the two pin. Ball goes out, takes out the seven. Nothing angle to kick out the 6 10. Very well executed by Solomon. Nick needs a mark and six pins to win it. All comes out of this in the 10th. Look out, crosses over. Oh, no. And just eight. Yeah, that's, a, that's an adrenaline rush right there. Just hung up in the ball a little too much. Accelerate definitely far inside left of his target. Watch the ball, the pins on the left side of the head pin. Brooklyn strike was not even a factor, but it was so light. It is a makeable spare. It's the 5-6, and he needs to make it. Spare and seven. With his parents, Tom and Ann, locked in. Can he fit it between? No! Leaves the five. And that's it. Solomon on the bench has won. The U15 Junior Gold Championship goes to Solomon of Beverly Hills on the bench, and he's just realizing he's a winner. And he's going to get the trophy. An incredible finish. Amazing. 207, 203, fourth in advantage going to game number two. These two youngsters are truly amazing. But Solomon Salama is your under 15 national junior gold champion. Solomon Salama gets to meet his idol, PBA star Jason Balmonte, after his victory today. And with the help of USBC President Frank Wilkinson, Barb and Bill Crispin of Storm Bowling, trophy presentation for Mabel Cummins and for Solomon. Mabel knocks off Sarah Sains, and Solomon a winner today in the championship match over Nick R. Chalky. Now for Kelly Kulik and the entire CBS Sports Network crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from the Junior Gold U15 Championships in Indianapolis, Indiana. In association with the United States Bowling Congress, it's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Mabel Cummins, Solomon Salama, our champions today in Indianapolis. Congratulations to those youngsters. They take home a national championship for both a day to remember.